lot of Detroit players on Norm Stewart's club. It's been a fertile recruiting ground. Lee Coward. The Panthers of Northern Iowa start in the man-to-man. -man. Smith right away to the bucket, and it's 2-0 Missouri. So much for the scouting reports. <laughs> Fife was Garden Smith. They went right to him. Doug Smith, one of the truly fine big guys in this country, takes it right to the basket. Missouri starts in the man-to-man -man as well. Dale Turner, the sophomore from Venice, Illinois, kicks it out to Mullenberg. Reese gets a lot of attention. He gets the ball. Mullenberg short with a jumper. Now you saw the three people collapse inside on Reese. Mullenberg is the best three-point shooter for the Northern Iowa Panthers, and it looks like he's going to have to make some. Bunker gets his first shot, won't go. You see Northern Iowa pushing the ball up the court. No slowdown here. Mullenberg outside. Reese will take a perimeter jumper. That's about the extent of his range, Dan. Yeah, it sure is, but he can go out that far very effectively. You see Missouri trying to run the ball down the court. Nice job by Northern Iowa to get back on defense. Peeler has struggled down the stretch. He was so sensational for much of the year. He's credited with that turnover. Well, he averages 17 points and about six rebounds and six assists a ball game. That's a heck of a year. Dale Turner for three, and Northern Iowa leads 5-2. Looks like they're over the jitters. <laughs> I would say. Coward, short on his jumper, Reese with a rebound. Mike, so far, Missouri has had to play against the set Panther defense each time, and really that's what Eldon Miller wants his ball club to do. Get back, set on defense, make Missouri play against five guys, not three on two, four on one. Reese from three-point range, will not take that one. They'll go inside, double-team Missouri, really hustling on defense, but leaving Northern Iowa open shots like that one from Turner. Reese, offensive rebound, missed the follow, got it again. Reese. <laughs> He's a bull in there. He Those is. are two of the best big guys you can find anywhere in Smith and Button, and he just kept getting the ball. Long-range shot won't go from McIntyre, who's been in a shooting slump. As a player from Missouri, what are you thinking now? You've seen the first-round upsets and the scares. You're going, oh, no? Well, I don't know that you're thinking about the first-round upsets and the scares, but you're wishing, gee, I wish the ball would go in the basket. They don't follow Reese outside. Nice hit fake by Reese and a good dish off inside to fight. Reese is such a big guy. Very surprising that he can put it on the deck that effectively. A nice pass. Really showing a lot of aspects to his game so far. 7-2, Northern Iowa. Peeler fouled on the way. Excuse me, Coward as he drove the base. Uh, no, it was Peeler. Drove the baseline, picked up the person. Now, one thing that Missouri has not done that they did right there, and that is penetrate against that defense. Thus far, they've been passing the ball around the perimeter, taking the perimeter jumper. But Anthony Peeler is really a guy who can put it on the deck and go to the basket. Reese is going to take a rest right here. Brad Hill, number 34, coming in the ball game for him. But that's one way. If your shots aren't going from the outside, you may want to try some penetration. Peeler at the line, 77% free throw shooter. You mentioned his shooting slump, Mike. Over the last few games, Norm Stewart very concerned. Peeler's an excellent free throw shooter. He's only been about 50% over about a seven game period. Well, he had an eight game stretch where he only averaged seven points and shot 33% from the floor. They thought maybe he broke out of it in the last half of his final game. Offensive rebound, the follow counts, and the foul. Button did a good job. Now, Fife really paid for that foul right there. Button got the rebound. Now, watch Button. Now well, you're going to kick it up here. Button has, has the ball. He's not blocked out on the free throw. But right before that replay, he gave a fake. Fife hit his chin on Button's shoulder. That head snapped back. So it's one of those where not only do you get the foul, but you get the pain that accompanies it. Button completes the three-point play. Missouri pulls to within one. Missouri. Button's a guy who's given up a lot of his... Uh, individual glory to become more of a team player as a freshman. He was really a sensational player. Averaged 13 and a half points a game. Here comes the alley-oop inside. Can't be handled. Knocked out out to Missouri. That's good defense by Missouri right there. A lot of confidence by Northern Iowa. Are you kidding me? Hill is about six feet five to throw the lob against Button and Smith <laughs> inside. Smith over fight. 
Northern Iowa does not look the least intimidated they're by doing a former number one team. They're doing a great job on the boards. Missouri getting one shot and done. Good ball movement, blocked inside, but the follow, another block and a foul this time as Doug Smith whacked Brad Hill as he got his second try. Brad Hill just came in the ball game. They tried to throw the alley-oop to him. Here he is operating inside. You can see sort of a forest of white shirts in there. Hill not intimidated at all. He's really going after it. And early in the ball game, Mike, you have to say that the Panthers are the ones getting to the loose balls, getting to the second shots. Missouri not playing with great intensity at this point in the ball game. Brad Hill has been a very inconsistent player, but they like to go to him at the end of ball games. He seems to perform very well under pressure. Missed the first free throw. Missed them both. That one badly. Missouri with a chance to gain the lead. Northern Iowa hasn't scored, Mike, since Reese went out of the ball game. You wonder how long Elder Miller will leave him down there, too. But nice power move. Fife got a hand on it on the way up. Here's it stolen back the other way. Coward missed and committed the offensive foul. How many times, Mike, do you see a player like Fife throw the ball away and then commit a foul? That's a great recovery to get in good position, draw the charge. Great play. There's a timeout on the court with 15.59 to go first half. It's 7-6 Northern Iowa. This is a city that's really excited about it, Mike. I've been to a lot of these first rounds, and I never saw as many people watching the practices as we saw yesterday. And they're scalping tickets. <laughs> that's right. There's no ordinance in Richmond against it, and some enterprising folks are getting a lot of money. Neither team shooting particularly well yet. Northern Iowa with the advantage. Missouri with a little full court pressure now drops back into the man to man. Reese is back in there. Reach over by Smith and knocked it out of bounds. Really impressed with the power of Jason Reese inside. Doug Smith, very quick player. I thought he was around him and had the steal, but Reese put that big arm up. Smith couldn't get there, knocked the ball out of bounds. Reese only needs 19 points to become the all time number one scorer in Northern Iowa history. He was their tournament MVP. You can just see Missouri's defense when Reese is in the game. He's the focal point of that defense. You really have to know where he is. Mullenberg from outside. Got it! And the foul! A three! Mullenberg, as we said, he's the leader on Northern Iowa in terms of three-point attempts and three-point makes. This is what you call a rainbow. This shot goes about six feet further than it has to. Takes the great circle route to the basket. McIntyre gets him on the arm. Cardinal error. You don't foul a guy and let him shoot the three-point shot and make it. Well, if you're going to foul a guy who's shooting the three-point shot, that's right. You get him on the elbow well enough that that ball doesn't go in the goal. Trying for the four-point play, and it's 11-6 Northern Isle. At some point in that young man's career, somebody told Mullenberg that you had to put some arc on the ball, and he certainly does. It's a good thing he doesn't have to play in old arenas where the ceiling's low. Button with a power move inside. And that was against Reese. They're going right at Bunton when Reese is matched up against him. Eldon Miller up off the bench. He thinks that should have been a charge. Bunton, a very, very good offensive player. He averages 14 and a half points a game and nearly 10 rebounds a game. Long range shot, buried by Brad Hill, who has only taken 42 three pointers all year. Nervous? I don't think so. Confident? I do think so. Pressure by the Northern Iowa defense. If you're Missouri, eventually you get to start thinking uh, just exactly who are these guys. Peeler with a brick on a three-pointer, but a great offensive rebound to tip it inside to Doug Smith. It was not a good-looking shot by Peeler. No, it was not, but he really recovered very well to keep that ball alive. We talked before the basketball game. Northern Iowa is going to win the game. They have to eliminate as many easy opportunities for Missouri as they can. One of the ways that you get easy opportunities is to get offensive rebounds. No block out that time against Peeler. You have to block out the shooter. Foul was called on the senior, Jonathan Cox. Smith misses the free throw. Cox is a fellow, number 22, who started 18 games for Northern Iowa, even though he only averages about two points a game. He's in there for some quickness and some defense. And it looks like they go to more pressure on defense when he comes in the ballgame. 14-8, Northern Iowa in control over Missouri, and the fans starting to get into it a little bit here with 14-23 to go in the half. 
Very few fans in this building at this point really care about who wins this game, and usually that means they start siding with the underdog. Hill hits another one. Hill, two for two from downtown. A 31% three-point shooter on the year, and it's 17-8. Maybe they ought to start guarding it. <laughs> they have to start guarding everybody. Smith misses the turnaround. Reese, another rebound. Mike, no. Five rebounds for Reese. No patience at all by Missouri on the offensive end. It's one pass, it's a shot, and that's why Northern Iowa is getting so many rebounds. You have to move that defense around, or they're in perfect position for the defensive rebound. And their coach, Norm Stewart, is about out of patience, too. Norm, who is mellowed with all the uh, physical problems he has right now, is not mellow. He's a little more mellow, but he's no Job over there. Cox says, I'll try it. He shot five long-range shots. That was a two. He had his foot on the line, but it was as long as a three, lacking an inch. Missouri wants a timeout. They are down 19-8. A timeout on the floor, 19-8 Northern Iowa. We'll be back after these words from your local station. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. And their three-point shooting has been sensational. They've hit four bombs. Missouri is 0 for 2 in the three-point shooting category. Mike, Missouri, as we've mentioned, not very patient on offense, and I'm sure Norm Stewart talked about that. They need to move the ball. They need to move themselves, and particularly, they need to move the defense around. Peeler has to dump it off back out to Coward. Coward and Smith in a little two-man game. Coward with a three-pointer. Reese got his hands on it again. Well, when, for it. when he gets his hands on it, you're not taking it away. It's Maurice Newby in the ball game. A lot of people have played for the Panthers early. If there were no labels on these uniforms, you would swear Missouri was in the purple jersey. Long range by Maurice Newby. You sit on the bench, everybody else is doing it. Go in the game and let it go. Northern Iowa shoots 39.8% from three-point range as a team. But today, they are 5 of 7, and it looks like they believe they can hit every one of them. Mike, they are wide open on those three-point shots. Peeler leans into one way short on the second shot. Smith, great tip and a great offensive rebound. Once they start batting it around up there, it's much to the advantage of Missouri. Doug Smith showing you some great hands right there. That's the first time Missouri scored in an age. A lot quicker inside as far as leaping ability than Northern Iowa. 22-10, the Panthers out of the Association of Mid-Continent University. And that's a mouthful. Yes, it is. So you got, it's not an e even an easy acronym. Turnaround jumper by Cedric McCullough won't go. If I was inside the three-point line. <laughs> 11.45 to go first half. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner with you from Richmond, Virginia. Northern Iowa switching the inside interchanges. There's Jeff Warren. Boy, that was good. Good defense to block the first one, but Jonathan Cox is going to get caught the second time. Warren, a freshman, 6'8", 202 pounds out of Litchfield, Michigan. What Missouri does, Mike, whether it's against a man-to-man -man or a zone, is they play three people on the perimeter and two guys inside. Coaches call that three out, two in. They interchange inside, come high post and low post, cut through. Anthony Peeler's going through all the time. A defense sets itself in good rebounding position. Unless you move that defense around, the defense stays in good rebounding position. So with Missouri coming down and shooting the ball so quickly, they're never moving Northern Iowa out of the excellent rebounding position, which is why they're not getting any second shots. Warren hits the first, only a 50% free throw shooter. Eldon Miller has taken Reese out for another breather, breather and certainly he can afford to with a 22-11 lead. One out of two for Warren. And I'm really surprised that Missouri has come out this way. They lost in the first round of the Big 8 tournament. They've had more rest than they would have expected to have. They just are not very sharp. Mullenberg, a little two-man game. He'll take a three with that big arc, and he got the roll. When you have an arc, that's why coaches tell you you're supposed to put arc on the ball, because the higher the arc, the better chance you have of one bouncing around like that and going in. Mullenberg has seven, and Northern Iowa's lead has grown to 14. Smith fouled inside. They're pointing at Cox. That would be his third. And he's gotten him in a big, big hurry. Very little movement on the Missouri offense. So Cox feels very comfortable leaving the man he's guarding, coming to double team against the inside guys. 
Cox will have to sit down at the 11-minute mark of the first half with his third person. Cox is not going to no. sit down, Mike. Eldon he, Miller just talked to him. He figured that he better go over there and sit down, but he's not going to. Smith has been the Missouri offense along with Bunton. They haven't gotten any help from anywhere else. Smith with six, Bunton with five. Ten minutes, 40 seconds to go. First half of play from Richmond. And it's Northern Iowa shocking Missouri, 25-13. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner with you. And oh, great defense. Side. Great defense, but here Northern Iowa's going to get it back. That's pretty good scrap right there both ways. Two on one fast break, and they convert. Coward gets the bucket, 25-15. Northern Iowa, for those of you who have just joined us, has done a sensational job with its long range shooting. They have hit six of eight. And Missouri has gotten no transition baskets prior to that one. The Missouri defense, Jeff Warren doing a great job inside, generating that easy opportunity. Picking up the defensive intensity a little bit. Mullenberg, number 44, showing you his versatility. He's been raining them in from three-point range. Now he's playing on the inside. Turner and Mullenberg. Shot clock is down to 11. Mullenberg, big arc from the baseline, missed it badly. Peeler with a rebound. Good defense that time by Missouri. Peeler tries to bounce past Fife with the steal. Great hustle. Northern Iowa is making all the right plays. Missouri not able to take advantage of their inside strength so far. Maybe somebody ought to tell them who they're playing. Maybe somebody ought to tell Missouri who they're playing. <laughs> I think Missouri knows. Another bomb, and that one should count for four. Maurice Newby. And I think he got hit on the arm. Well, we've already had one four-point play in this game. It's 28-15. Smith, offensive foul. Mike, we keep talking about patience on offense. The ball goes into Doug Smith. It's simply not coming back out. That time, Travis Ford threw him the ball. Now, here Smith gets it. Now, the defensive guy, Newby, drops down. Ford is wide open at the foul line for a jump shot, but Smith takes it to the basket. If the guy's going to drop down, Smith has to recognize where the pressure's coming from, throw it to the open guy. He's going to get it right back in most instances. Two fouls on Doug Smith. You're not going to beat very many people with one pass and a shot, and that's what Missouri has done the entire first 11 minutes of this basketball game. Jason Reese, double zero back in the game. They try to feed it low. He lost it. Fife had it. Scramble. How did McIntyre come up with that ball? Still a scramble, and Smith will bring it up. Missouri could really use some point production from McIntyre. Smith, baseline jumper, barely grazed the rim. Warren got the rebound, and he is fouled by Jason Reese. Now, Reese was in excellent position for the rebound. It was just a funny shot, and that it didn't hit the rim the way it's supposed to. But again, one pass and a shot. Now, watch as the ball grazes the rim. rim. Reese is in excellent position, but that ball comes off, almost take Warren's head off. Reese gets the foul. One pass and a shot just isn't going to get it done. 16 fouls on Northern Iowa. Missouri has committed four. That was Nathan Button checking back into the lineup. Norm Stewart going to ask some of his substitutes to do the job. Peeler out of the game, Ford in. Smith out of the game, Warren in. Peeler has been invisible on offense. And the shots he's taken have just nicked the front of the rim. McIntyre, who had been in a shooting slump, may be coming out of it. Now that guy can flat shoot the basketball. He's a great athlete out there. He's a hard-nosed player. Recently, he's been reluctant to take his shots, so we'll see what that does to his confidence. He has three on that shot. And here is the shooting. 78% today from three-point range for Northern Ireland. Boy, look at Reese get positioned inside. Nice move, put it up, he's fouled. He makes himself so big down there. Coach is talking about getting position and making yourself big. You spread out your legs, you spread out your arm. Poor Warren just can't get around him. Look at this, double zero down there, sitting down inside. Not a real good pass, but he controls it anyhow. Dribbles and gets away with it, just powers it up to the basket. That's a nice move. Warren is 202, Reese is 240. There's a timeout on the floor. Northern Iowa leads Missouri 28-18. Back after these words from your local stations on an NCAA production telecast. 14-1 for Northern Iowa. 
Missouri doesn't usually get a lot of production from their bench, only about 14 points a game, but they, they certainly aren't used to getting blown away like that in the bench scoring, particularly this early in the basketball game. Nick Pace, number 40, is in for Northern Iowa. And Eldon Miller using players that uh, he normally wouldn't expect to use. Cam Johnson shooting the ball, he's just in. Offensive rebound, the follow will not go, and a rebound foul. Let's see who picks it up, it's Johnson. Johnson, Johnson gonna get the foul. You might wonder, and we've talked about this before, why is it that Northern Iowa is getting the offensive rebounds? Well, the answer is you saw the excellent movement that they have, and also Missouri, once you spread the defense out a little bit, the defense has to block out. Missouri not blocking out. Here comes Reese back in the ball game. Pace, in that situation, Pace comes in just to give Reese a little bit of extra time after that timeout. Reese has been out twice in the first half, so fatigue should not be a factor for him right now. Smith hits the free throw, the front end of a one and one. Smith with seven points. He and Bunton have basically been it. And Missouri really has to get something from the perimeter. Peeler, as you've mentioned, hasn't done anything. Coward only has two. McIntyre now hit that three-pointer a little while ago. They might want to try to get him the basketball. 28-20, seven minutes, 15 seconds to go first half. Dale Turner on the drive, and he's fouled. Missouri really felt like they could put some defensive pressure on the perimeter on Northern Iowa. Anthony Peeler that time trying, but not having very much success. Eldon Miller's crew has handled it well so far. Sixth team foul against Missouri. Good trouble getting it in here. Nearly five seconds. Reese has some excellent hands catching the ball in traffic. Reese low, wheels into the lane, triple team and lost it. It's usually tough to dribble it in there. McIntyre on the run. Northern Iowa does a nice job getting back on defense. Now Missouri once again has to play against the set. Smith kicks it back out to McIntyre. Ford is in there with it. And Peeler and Bunton takes this shot. Partially blocked, but Smith got the follow. Hill got a hand on the original shot. That's a tough play to guard. That's not the way Missouri draws it up, obviously, but the positioning was great. Button coming to the high post. Smith in good position down low. Smith, the Big 8 Player of the Year, has 10. The lead is cut to six. This is as close as Missouri has been in quite a while, and their fans here are standing. Hill, another bomb, a three-pointer, and the lead goes back to nine. It's hard to trade two for three and catch up. Hill has hit three long-range shots as we approach the six-minute mark. Hill now matching up defensively against Doug Smith. Peeler averaging more than 17 points a game, has not scored and has not been close. That's what he liked to do, drive, and he missed that one. Knocked away by Button, and he got the score. Peeler was the one that got a hand in there and knocked it away, Mike. That's a pretty good play. That's what Peeler has to do. He's not shooting well from the outside, even though he missed that shot. That puts a lot of pressure on the defense inside. If you force people to come to help, you're in good position for offensive rebounding. Missouri extending its defense. This I want to turn it. Reese just laid a big league screen on Smith. <laughs> Reese down low, nice move, pass, Button got the basket and he's fouled. What a move. What power inside. He's trapped along the baseline. He dribbles the ball into an area that's normally trouble. Again, good position, has his feet solidly planted. He's under the basket, does a 360, comes back out, gets fouled, still puts it in the basket. Watch him again right here. See that spin, and he gets away with that. As he spins, Button goes to defend the spin, and then he has the quickness to spin back around the other way. When we first started talking to the Northern Iowa people, we asked them what kind of a player is Jason Reese, and they just said he's a bull. He's a very talented bull, too. There's Reese, gonna, he's gonna get another breather right here. Reese only has five points, Dan, but his impact on this game goes far beyond that. They are, every time he catches the ball, everybody's collapsing against him. Northern Iowa doing a nice job cutting into open area. 34-24, another misfire from Peeler. And to be honest, he hasn't been close. No, he hasn't, but Mike, he's got to keep shooting the basketball. That was a good shot for him, a cut into the middle. 
He has good quickness. He was trailed through the middle. He missed the shot. He's going to go out of the ball game now. But he's got to continue to do that. Lee Coward comes in for him. I mean, this young man can score in bunches. He had 42 in one game earlier in the year. Ford. Coward. Horton in the basketball game for Missouri. Coward with a runner. Coward out there, he's got the broken left hand, has a special pad, and he's got a weightlifter's glove on. Sort of looks like Dr. Strange glove out there, but doesn't shoot like Dr. Strange glove. Northern Iowa's lead remains at 8, 4.35 to go. Here's a travel call on Maurice Newby. Few turnovers for either ball club. There's the uh, patchwork job they've done on Coward. They need him in the basketball game. He's the leader out on the court. Smith, try to collapse on him. Missed the shot. Fight for the rebound. You know, Smith is much better advised to throw that ball to Coward, get the defense to go back to Coward, and you get it back. You do that a couple of times, you have a much better opening. That time he forced the ball. Hill with Smith on him. Ooh. <laughs> Travis Ford's a little guy. Hill laid the shoulder into it. Hill with a runner may have been partially blocked by Smith. It was, but he picked up the foul. That is three on Doug Smith. And Doug Smith has been the offense so far for Missouri. I'm sorry, they're now saying that's only two. Doug Smith there having to guard Hill because Hill has made those three pointers. Most of the time you wouldn't see Doug Smith that far outside on a guy he's matched up against. Some guys burying the threes, you gotta go get him. Hill with a nice move around him. Hill with nine points goes to the line for a pair. Northern Iowa shooting in this ball game uh, from three point range, two point range, and the free throw line far better than their statistics would indicate they would. When you're an underdog, if you're gonna upset the favorite, you have to do things like that. You Hill don't got them both. You don't expect to beat Missouri if you're gonna shoot 35%. Full court pressure by Northern Iowa. 36-26, McIntyre gets it up to Coward. Three on one situation. Nice job to get back on defense. But there's the jam by Smith. Fife broke up a three on one. Northern Iowa thought they had a steal. Some of the guys ran down the court and when the ball was batted back to Missouri, Smith with the big dunk. Inside 10 again with 3.39 to go. Hill leans in, offensive foul on Hill. Hill may be just a little bit carried away with himself. He's having a great first half. He's a forward. That time he was handling the ball in the point guard slot. Two fouls now against Hill. As a coach, you like a guy to have, a, have confidence, but you like him to be realistic as well. There's a timeout on the court. 3.37 to go in the half. Northern Iowa leads it by eight. We'll be back after these words from your local station. This is an NCAA Productions Telecast. Three thirty-seven to go in the first half from the southeast region in Richmond. Northern Iowa continues its upset bid, 36-28 over Missouri. There is Anthony Peeler struggling again today the way he has down the stretch all year. One point, he averages more than 17, and they miss more than his scoring, Dan. He's a great penetrator, and he gets an awful lot of assists. He doesn't have any assists today. He's 0 for 4 from the field, 1 for 2 from the free throw line. I don't recall him having a rebound. He gets about six rebounds a game, too. Nice move by McIntyre, but then cut off at the baseline. Boy, good defense by Fife. Switched just at the last minute. Enough to make some physical contact. Not enough for a foul that knocks McIntyre off balance. Reese back in there for Northern Iowa. The Panthers by eight points. Mullenberg, another bomb. Boy, those take forever to come down. Reese had the offensive rebound, and he's fouled inside. Northern Iowa's offensive concept against the Missouri man-to-man -man thus far has been very good. With every pass, there's interchanges both on the ball and off the ball. Mullenberg, <laughs> what a <laughs> rainbow. But there's Reese, you gotta block him off the board. Foul was called on Jim Horton, the 6'10 sophomore from Columbia, Missouri. With the interchanges though on every pass, there's McIntyre now sitting down on the bench. The defense has to adjust, and if the shot goes up while the defense is in the middle of an adjustment, you can't block out your guy. Reese taking advantage. Reese, six points, seven rebounds in the first half. Strong on that one, the rebound to Button. Jamal Coleman in the basketball game now from Missouri. It looks like Norm Stewart 
trying to find the right combination. Smith a little strong. Button almost got the rebound, but Dale Turner, Dale Turner pulled it down. It's tough. Button went up over Reese, but he can't get it again. One pass and a shot. It's not like Norm Stewart is sitting over there saying, hey guys, throw one pass and shoot the ball. He's going crazy because he can't get them to run through their offense a couple of times. Reese in the lane over Button. Oh, what a job he's doing inside. Reese with eight and the lead is 11. Now that's, this is what makes this tournament fun, isn't it? Get up, get up. Button short on the jumper, short on the follow. Another amount of Reese. I'm going to stop saying it. <laughs> Northern Iowa just doing a tremendous job. Eldon Miller could not have expected that his team would play any better than they have in this first half. Nice move by Turner to baseline shot, and it's goaltending. What a burst of speed by Dale Turner out of Venice, Illinois. Three more substitutes coming in the game for Missouri. Turner really blows by, and again, no help comes from Smith because he's got to worry about Reese, and by the time Button can get over there to help, it's too late. 41-28. And Norm Stewart says, I want to talk about this one more time. The last two minutes and two seconds of the first half, his team is down by 13. Hill has 11, Reese 8, Mullenberg 7. For Missouri, Smith with 12 and Bunton with 7. Northern Iowa has hit 8 of 12. Three-point shots here in the half. Peeler and McIntyre back in the ball game, and I think it's time. If Peeler is going to be a big-time player, it's time for him to step up and show what he can do. Jamal Coleman in there with him. Smith. Excellent defense by Northern Iowa. McIntyre for three. Won't go. And a uh, foul will go against Jonathan Cox. That's against Jamal no, I'm, Coleman. I'm sorry, Jamal, Jamal Coleman. Coleman. That's his first. Well, that time you had a couple of passes by Missouri, Mike, but the ball stayed on the same side of the court constantly. McIntyre, this is a shot that he can make. I think that's one he has to take. Great block out inside there by number 50, Fife. He gets fouled by Jamal Coleman, who's out of your picture, but Northern Iowa continues to do a good job on the blockouts, to do a good job defensively. That's Travis Ford coming back in the ball game for Jamal Coleman. Mullenberg at the free throw line, misses, almost tipped in by Fife. He got the rebound and throws up an air ball from two feet away. Doug I think Smith, he thought there's going to be a lot of pressure there. Well, Doug Smith has that tendency yeah. to uh, force you to rethink your position. <laughs> Peeler almost had it taken away. And then Missouri throws it away with 1.15 to go in the half. And Norm Stewart comes up off his bench, not real happy. I, I'm going to feel terrible about saying this. I've been saying Missouri needs to throw more passes all game, but that time they overpassed. Doug Smith with a wide open shot after an excellent pass by Anthony Peeler. Newby and Hill, this is Mullenberg. Beats Fife, double team, good pass inside. They try to kick it back out to Hill, and Peeler with a steal. Nice job by Missouri. If you're going to come back in a ball game, you usually have to get those good defensive series where you create a tough shot or a turnover. McCullough is all over Peeler, who misses his field goal try. He is 0 for 5. That was a good shot, though, Mike. You can, Peeler, the expression on his face is sort of like, oh no, here it goes again. And that's not the way you can play in an NCAA tournament game. If it's going badly for you, you just got to do other things to help your team. And you still have to take your opportunities when they're available. Peeler not playing with a lot of confidence at the moment. Northern Iowa up by 13, is holding for the last shot. Well, this score will get some attention around the country. I should think so. The shot clock is off. That's the game clock in the lower right-hand corner. Mullenberg missed a three, but he is fouled by McIntyre. That's the second time McIntyre has committed a foul on a three-point shot. The first one went in. McIntyre very unhappy with the call. A typical basketball player, though. You knock some guy in his fanny and you're complaining about the call. There, McIntyre turns that hip into him, knocks him down. Very fortunate that ball didn't go in the basket. Mullenberg will go to the line, an 87% free throw shooter, number 13 in the country. 87.6 to be exact. This is amazing. Isn't I am, it? I am amazed. Of course, I'm sure all the people from Northern Iowa were saying, we told you so. 
And it certainly isn't over yet. 42-28. Missed. 14-point lead. McIntyre will have a chance on a three. And got it! Holy cow, that was a 30-footer. That was a good on-balance shot. That kid showing you what kind of range that he actually has. Team. Missouri gets the rebound, and we have a foul inside. Foul is against Fife. Fife, and he picks up his second person. No one in foul trouble for Missouri, except for Jonathan Cox, a reserve guard, who picked up three in a hurry. And without Peeler, with Missouri being a pretty good team, they're faced here with another pretty good team, but a pretty good team that has an 11-point lead. Smith with a turnaround jumper in the lane, cuts the lead back to nine, and Smith has 14 points. The only man in double figures for Missouri and literally most of the offense. Usually in a basketball game like this, Mike, if there's going to be an upset, the favorite is going to make at least one serious run against the underdog. It'll be interesting to see when that run comes, how Northern Iowa will react to it. Missouri certainly extending its defense here at the beginning of the second half. Northern Iowa well coached, very patient. Reese wants the ball. Turner gets it to him. And Reese can't get it to fall. Button came over, really bothered the shot with some good double team help. Reese, though, doing a nice job catching the ball inside once again. Alley up inside, and Smith gets the jam. This might be the run, Dan. Nice job by Doug Smith. He made eye contact with Lee Coward, took one step up, and then exploded to the baseline. Excellent pass. 42-35, Dale Turner being guarded closely by Ford. Now remember, Missouri hit that three-pointer at the buzzer in the first half, and they certainly seem to have come out playing on the emotion that that generated. There is a bad pass inside. And ahead of the pack is Coward. Missed the shot. Fife with a rebound. Well, there's a break for Northern Iowa. It's a break for Northern Iowa because the shot is missed, but you make your own breaks. Turner had to get out of the cheerleaders in press row. He really hustled to get down the court, bothered that shot just enough to cause the miss. Northern Iowa has made a couple of bad passes to start this half. Turner, it's an air ball, just hits the rim. Loose and Smith comes out with it. Now they made those three-point shots in situations like that in the first half. McIntyre looks to Norm Stewart, gives it up to Coward. Smith says, I want the ball. Instead, they go to Bunt. Three-point shot by McIntyre. McIntyre ended up underneath the bench. He's been called for two fouls on three-point shots. He's wanting one now. Elvin Miller calling a timeout. Here come the Missouri Tigers. Northern Iowa is led by as many as 14. Missouri has cut the lead to four. It's 42-38, 7-16 to go in the ball game from Richmond. We're in Richmond, Virginia for the Southeast region of the NCAA, a first round game that finds Northern Iowa on top of Missouri, 42-38. But Missouri has scored the first seven points of the second half to cut into that big halftime lead. And here is full court pressure from the Tigers. And that 35-foot jump shot by McIntyre to end the first half, really starting this big turnaround. The last three points of the first half, the first seven of the second half, Northern Iowa is going to have to react. And Reese has not touched the ball very much inside here in the second half, something Northern Iowa was very effective at in the first half. Turnaround jumper by Cedric McCullough. That's his first basket of the game. Extends the lead back to six. Coward for three. Too strong. Reese got a hand on it, took that side to fight. Early in the second half, Missouri doing a much better job catching the ball inside, passing it back outside to the open man. McIntyre just hit one from three-point range on a play like that. However, Coward missed the last one. Reese inside against Smith, went right by him, was stripped on the way up, and there's a foul. 
Well, you wouldn't think a guy that big could have that kind of quickness. Particularly against a guy like Doug Smith, who is noted for his quickness. As Reese is going to catch the ball, though, Smith just doesn't do a good enough job getting that foot on the baseline. In that situation, you move your body, you get your foot as the defensive player, as the defensive player, right on that baseline. If Reese is going by you, he's going out of bounds. Third foul on Doug Smith. Reese hits the free throw, 45-38 Northern Isle. Nine points on the day for Reese. He needs 19 to become the school's all-time leading scorer. Got the bounce on that one. The lead is back to eight. So after that 7-0 run to start the half, Northern Iowa scored the last four. There's the first run. Northern Iowa reacts to it very well, Mike. Missouri, however, is back in the game. Boy, Reese doing a nice job keeping the ball away from Smith inside. Look at the job collapsing on Smith. Let's see if it was touched or a backcourt violation, obviously tipped by Northern Isle. Mullenberg got a hand on the basketball, but gee, everybody's dropping down inside against Smith. Smith now has Bunt and has Fife on it. And Mullenberg drops down again. That's a good move by Coward when he catches the ball to penetrate inside. Shot clock at nine, and what a defensive job by Northern Isle. Bunton gets the little short shot, misses Reese with another rebound. That's 11. These kids are for real, aren't they? I, I certainly, <laughs> they believe they are. Eldon Miller over there with that purple coat on, orchestrating his ball club. Bombs away. This one won't go, but the follow. And Cedric McCullough has two quick baskets. They have gotten contributions from just about everybody. Brad Hill scores 11 in the first half. McCullough doesn't score at all. Here in the second half, when they need him most, he answers that Missouri run with four points. The lead is back to double digits. 15 minutes to go in the game. Bunton, good pump fake, bangs into Reese, no ball, missed the shot, Reese with another rebound. It's hard to shoot the ball even just a few feet after you've just pushed a mountain like that out of the way. Fife couldn't handle it, stepped on the end line, and then crashes into the crowd. Fife a few was, times Northern Iowa has run at a cost him that time. Fife was looking to make a pass, Mike, and he just didn't catch the ball. You gotta do one before the other. They had a break opportunity, he could see it. But the ball slipped through his hand. Eldon Miller goes to his bench. He'll put uh, Brad Hill, number 34, back in the ball game. He has some range, and he also gets number 22, Jonathan Cox, in there. This is Warren for Missouri. Travis Ford, good penetrating move, but he missed the shot, and there is Reese again. 13 rebounds. When Missouri has shown penetration, the big guys stand around and watch the penetration, Mike. If one of your guys is going to penetrate, you've got to move yourself into a position where he can make the pass. That was a real tough shot. There was a lot of defensive pressure against Travis Ford. Hill to Reese. Off balance, got it anyway. 15 to 38. Northern Iowa back by a dozen. Some pressure now by Northern Iowa. Timeout called by Norm Stewart in Missouri. There's the timeout on the floor with the score. Northern Iowa 50, Missouri 38. We'll be back after these words from your local station. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. And are they having a good time or what? I think they are. After giving up the first seven points of the half, Northern Iowa has scored the last eight. Bad shot inside and a foul inside on Warren. Typical of what Missouri has done throughout the ball game, with the exception of that 10-point run. You get ex excellent penetration from Coward. Northern Iowa reacts very well, but when the guards penetrate, the big guys are standing. As in contrast to the last Northern Iowa basket, where Reese steps into an open area with the penetration and scores easily. Jonathan Cox looking to feed inside, kicks it back out instead to Newby. Missouri's really got to turn up the pressure defensively. I think they've got to get some turnovers and create some easy opportunities. Newby with a range in and out on a long one this time, but here's the follow by Cedric McCullough. Reese trying to keep it alive. And the foul will go on Reese. That's only his second, though. And I think that's one of the reasons, much more than just his stamina, why Eldon Miller took him out of the ball game so many times in the first half. He's such a key player. He's playing against excellent big guys like Bunton and Smith. You just don't want him to get into foul trouble. Here you can see there, Reese with two guys all over him. 
The ball rebounds out very long. McCullough gets that rebound because they've got to be so concerned about Reese. He slaps Doug Smith across the arm. And now Reese has gone to the bench to get a breather with 13-18 to go in the game. Pfeiffer is back in there. But not nearly as strong inside with that lineup, and Smith exploits it immediately. Boy, what a jump step to the basket right there. Doug Smith seeing Brad Hill at about 6'5 against him just takes him right to the basket. Smith has 18 points. Hill double teamed inside. Peeler took it away. Jump ball situation. Ball goes to Missouri. It's the difference between having Reese in there and having Hill in there. The defense doubles down on Hill and swallows him up. You don't swallow Reese up very easily. Eldon Miller has done a sensational job with this club. Of course, he's always had a great reputation as a coach, someone who can mold a team, and he certainly has done it with these guys. Smith with a runner, short. Nice job by Peeler. Peeler gets a hand on that basketball, keeps it alive. Smith eventually tips it in. Smith had three cracks at it and has 20 points, 50-42. Boy, every time Reese goes out, here they come, and Reese is getting ready to come back in the game. Norm Stewart requesting a foul, not getting it. Turner. Knocked away, and it's out to Northern Iowa with 12.15 to go. Peeler has shown very short flashes of the kind of ability he has. It's like lightning quick hands right there. He knocked the ball away from Newby. The Panthers fortunate to keep it. But he has only one point today. And really hasn't been close on a shot. Reese double teamed and mugged the foul on McIntyre. That will be three on John McIntyre. McIntyre attacked him the last time they attack Hill they get the ball that time Reese just he gets an expression on his face like swatting a fly and throws the ball back out draws the foul non-shooting foul the third on Missouri in this half Northern Iowa has committed two Newby has good range but he's missed two long range shots in this half drilled a couple in the first half both teams have played exclusively man-to-man -man defense in this ball game. Smith kicks it back outside. The long bomb by Travis Ford. Cuts it to five. Inside to Smith. Smith doing a nice job waiting for the defense to get there, getting it back to Ford. Defense does not have a chance to recover. Turner guarded by Ford. Here comes Missouri again. Northern Iowa reacted to the first run very well. Hill outside. They're not getting as many easy shots in this half. No, they're certainly not. Missouri doing a better job on the defensive end of the court. You can see how many people are inside around Reese. It's a good idea. Missouri on another run. 7-0. Reese double teamed. Lost it on the way in. And they'll call the foul on Smith. That is four. On Doug Smith, he's really unhappy about it, so is Norm Stewart. Reese simply does not lose the ball when you get it to him inside, and if he's gonna power in there, at some point a whistle's gonna blow here. There's no question about that foul. He sticks that knee in there. Warren knocks him down. That's definitely a foul. 11 minutes and eight seconds to go in the game. Missouri making its second run in Northern Iowa. They have closed within five, but Smith with 20 points has to leave the game with his fourth foul. 11.08 to go. Reese from the baseline. Missouri really in trouble. Smith on the bench with four fouls. Peeler not making any sort of a contribution at all. Reese has 14. The lead has grown to seven, and no one except Button is over six points for Missouri. Reese with another rebound. Seems like he's gotten every rebound there has been to get today. Well, he's gotten 14 of them. And every time Missouri makes a charge, Northern Iowa seems equal to the task. Warren really struggling against <laughs> Reese. Reese outweighs him by about 40 pounds. Look at that catch. Reese, it's not pretty, but it's been very effective. This is McIntyre for Missouri as we approach 10 minutes. Ahead to Button. Great pass. Great play by McIntyre. He makes the strong block out, gets the rebound. Ahead to Button with the nice pass. McIntyre, I think, is going to have to step up his game in the second half. Missouri needs to get some production from somebody, and McIntyre looks like the best candidate. 
52-47, Eldon Miller tells Turner to take it out a little bit. And now he's got Mullenberg, number 44, back in there. He can light it up. Mullenberg, it's a two-point shot just on the line, but he buried it. What a good quick pass by Fife. Catching the ball inside, passing it back outside. 54-47, Northern Iowa with 9.35 to go in the game. One to four. For Missouri, maybe you should know who's down inside. Don't drop in on Fife quite so much. Turnaround jumper by Bunton. He'll draw the foul from Reese. That's number three on Reese. Just before that pass went inside to Bunton, I think Reese asked to come out of the basketball game. He is really winded. He's dragging. McIntyre with an excellent pass in there. Here's Bunton wheeling now against Reese. Reese with the obvious foul. But as we said, just before that play started, he asked to come out of the basketball game. He is exhausted. Eldon Miller has done a nice job getting him in and getting him out. He has had to play very, very hard today. Reese has 14 points, 14 rebounds. Button's free throw is good. He cuts the lead to six. Against one of the truly big-time front lines yes. in this country. That tends to wear you down a bit. They'll give him as much of a breather as they can. Button now, 10 points. Outside of Smith, he went in double figures for Norm Stewart's Tigers. The lead cut back to five, 9.26 left. And usually when Reese has been out of the game, Northern Iowa has sputtered. Now they've only got a five-point cushion to play with. It'll be interesting to see how they react. They've reacted well to everything else. Turner driving on Ford and fouled by Ford. Turner's done that a couple of times, recognizing that he's got a defensive man who's a little bit slower. He just explodes to the baseline. Ford not able to catch up. That is the fifth team foul against Missouri. Northern Iowa has committed only three. Cox is back in. Jonathan out of Springfield, Illinois, is senior. Really their quickest player. Another good look at Reese. Ford goes out. Ford's helped him in the second half. He's sure had has. A pretty good second half. McIntyre is back in. New shot clock, and I wouldn't be surprised to see one for uh, Northern Iowa take as much time off of that as they can. Hill behind the back bounce pass, and then McCullough missed the shot. A little early for that, isn't it? <laughs> I would think so. Coward, baseline drive, good move, cuts it to three. Missouri's got many more fast break opportunities in the second half. Coward doing a real nice job there. Now the defensive pressure. Turner, good penetration, fouled from behind. Yes, Lee Coward just took a swat at him. Got him on the head with the elbow. Well, that tends to disrupt your shot. Keep in mind, Reese still on the bench. Still fighting for uh, all the air he can find in the Richmond Coliseum. It's been a much faster pace in the second half, Mike, and I think Reese at 6'8", 240 pounds, is having a tough time adjusting to that pace. Turner, 70% free throw shooter. He's done a great job all year for this club. 137 assists and only 60 turnovers. And when your ratio is more than two to one, you've done a good job. And that's particularly impressive because as a team, Northern Iowa's assist turnover ratio is almost one to one. Loose ball after the missed free throw. The lead is four. Peeler on the run. Pull up jumper. He's missed every shot he has taken today. At some point, you just expect one of them to go down, and then you look for an explosion from Peeler. You get the feeling if he makes one, he might make 15 in a row, but that first one has really eluded him. Nice job by Missouri. Reese not in there. They're not collapsing inside on the, the post guys. Don't have to if it's not Reese. Turn to the hill. Hill on the way in, had it stripped by Peeler, but Missouri can't get the ball. Hill must feel like a pinball in there, bouncing off everybody. Shot clock is at seven. I don't know that Missouri, or excuse me, that Northern Iowa realizes that. Turn oh my. Off balance, almost made it, did draw the foul. Oh, that would have been a huge shot. He gets the foul from Lee Coward, that's three. As it is, Mike, I think it's a big play. If yeah. you're Lee Coward, you just have to make sure you don't foul in that situation. It's a rushed shot if he makes it fine, but you don't want to let the clock 
run down to a couple of seconds and then commit a foul. Turner, one out of two from the free throw line today. Time becoming a factor now, 7.44 to go in the ball game. As long as Eldon Miller can hold the lead, Reese will stay on the bench. Reese with those three personal fouls, and you definitely want to have him in during the stretch run. Turner hits them both, and Northern Iowa continues to cling to the lead. Missouri has led only once. That was at 2 nothing. Timeout with the score, 57-51 Northern Iowa. Back after these words from your local stations, this is an NCAA Productions Telecast. Northern Iowa continues to lead by six, and this is why. Reese, 14 points, 14 rebounds. The team shooting nearly 50% from three-point range for Missouri. Smith, who's been on the bench with four fouls, 20 points and 12 rebounds. Anthony Peeler averaging 17 points a game, one point. He has missed all six of his field goal tries. Reese back in the ball game. Doug Smith back in the ball game. The two big guys both in foul trouble. Time to go with who brung you with seven and a half minutes to go in the game. McIntyre to Smith, back to McIntyre. He got caught, lost it. He was surprised by the pass. Doug Smith threw him the ball in almost an impossible situation. He was not open, and then he's left to fend for himself inside. Turner brings it up. Let's see if they go right back to Reese. This is Hill. McCullough, baseline jumper. He's hit three big shots in the second half. That's a very dangerous play, and Reese is going to get foul number four. Eldon Miller very upset. Reese has to know what time it is in the game, what the situation in the game is, how important he is. You cannot get that foul right there. Again, Missouri in transition. They have been much more effective in transition. Reese just doesn't get there in time. If he's not going to take and lay him out, he's got to get out of the way. You don't want to get foul number four right there. Button scores his 12th point. Here comes Fife back in for Reese at the 7.05 mark. Eldon Miller has been fortunate. Every time he's been able to take him out, he's had a at least semi-comfortable lead. Now Reese is really dragging him. We talked to the Northern Iowa people yesterday, Mike, and they did not indicate that anybody was having any physical problems, but as tired as he looks, and as much as he's been out of the game, I'm wondering if maybe he's not under the weather or has been under the weather with the flu or something. It sure looks like it. Because he's really hurting over there. 59-53. Double team, reach in foul. They it called it on Smith. Oh, that's five. They called it on Doug, Doug Smith. Smith. I thought it was going to be on McIntyre. I thought it might have been a walk. McIntyre really gets in there with the double team. Smith reaches in. That reach right there will get you every time. Smith is disbelieving. 6.45 to go in the game. Doug Smith has fouled out of the game with 20 points and 12 rebounds, and he's gone with an awful lot of time to go. Boy, that's that's really a blow for Missouri. Smith doesn't believe it. It almost looks to me, Mike, like the Missouri people are surprised that that's his fifth foul. It looks to me that the way Smith is talking, the way Norm Stewart went over to the scorer's table, they may have thought he only had four fouls. This is just a very bad foul by Smith here. You, I don't know that you know he touches him there, but it certainly looks like a foul, and the official has to call what he sees, and if you've got four fouls, you don't do that. And an official who's not in perfect position will see the reach in and blow the whistle. It's just automatic. And you're right, you don't do that. He made the same kind of silly foul that Reese made at the other end just a moment ago that sat him down with four. And a technical foul has been called against Missouri. <laughs> Holy cow, this could be huge. There's the miss by Cox. That was the That's one and one right. opportunity. He's the 51% shooter. He's not <laughs> going to be shooting the technical. Mullenberg will go to the line. He is only two out of four at the line today, even though he's one of the nation's leaders in free throws. I wonder who the technical was called on. I didn't see any real no. violent reactions from any of the players. Tough to tell anymore because every technical is a two-shot foul. Mullenberg with that arch. Now, Norm Stewart did leave the coach's box and walk up to half court, but 
I would be surprised if that was the technical foul call in that situation. It was called on Doug Smith, I guess, for beefing about the foul. But what a big play. Two points, but they get the ball back, leading 61-53. And more important, Doug Smith is gone. Two points, you get the ball back, you're up by eight points, and the best player on the other team is fouled out of the game. What more could That's you ask for? One play, it's tough to come up with more than that. And now Missouri will have a chance to talk about it, see what they can do. A timeout with an eight-point lead. We'll be back after these words from your local station. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Gets himself a technical foul called for saying something to the official after he fouls out. And it turns out that the Missouri bench did know he had four personal fouls. The reason they were walking around questioning was because they were trying to find out why Smith got the tee called against him. Mike Patrick and Dan Bonner with you from Richmond, Virginia, 6.27 to go. Northern Iowa by eight. Their star, Reese, still on the bench with four fouls, trying to get a breather. Mullenberg with a high arching jumper, increases the lead to 10. What good movement without the ball by Mullenberg. It's time now for Anthony Peeler to step up. He's been invisible the entire game. If Missouri's gonna do it, they gotta get him involved. Button has one spin out on him. Ahead to McCullough, one on one. He does the wise thing and holds up. Northern Iowa has shown the tendency to run when they have the opportunity, but that's another nice job to pull it back out, work against the defense. There you can see Missouri with no timeouts left. They've been calling timeouts throughout the game to try to stop Northern Iowa run. Mullenberg into the lane again. Give him 16. The lead has grown to 12. And like a heavyweight champion fighter who has been annoyed by the underdog with a lot of jabs, Northern Iowa now trying to throw the knockout punch. Looks like Buster Douglas with a left and a right here, and Mike Tyson is about to go down. Here's holding by McCullough underneath, his second personal. Mullenberg with a very quiet 16 points until those last two. With Reese out of the ball game, with the game sort of on the line, here Northern Iowa turns it up, and it's been Mullenberg leading the way. The Panthers have outscored Missouri 11 to two in a little over three minutes. It's been a half of runs. Missouri started 7-0. Northern Iowa answered 8-0 here in the second half. Northern Iowa's gotten contributions from a lot of people. Brad Hill had 11 in the first half. McCullough scored 6 in the second half. But he got loose inside, missed the shot, but he's fouled. Not a very good defensive job by Brad Hill. Of course, Brad Hill is much smaller than Button, and that time the Northern Iowa defense did not react down and help out. Fife, who you get a look at there, picks up his third personal foul. Of course, Fife, it's a physical mismatch at 201 against Button, who was a much bigger guy around 235. Button, a really effective offensive player. Northern Iowa has been able to bother him the entire game by having the defense collapse to Button with a very quick move that time. Button, only a 59% free throw shooter, but he's hit all five today and has 13. Nice stroke for a 59% shooter. 65, 54. The lead is 11 with 528 to go in the game. And Button is going to have to carry them inside. Here's some pressure now by Missouri. Coleman Ford in the game. They don't have foul problems, so they can afford to get after him. Turner's done an excellent job protecting the ball. This is Hill. Hill really staggers around out there handling the ball, and he does a pretty nice job. Mullenberg has hit the last two big shots. Northern Iowa going to keep the to be very patient. Shot clock is at 17. They're going to burn as much time off that baby as they can. Now here, Turner has the basketball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here they come. Turner into the lane. What a shot! Great discipline. Great offensive discipline. Reese is going to get up and come back in the ball game. Ten for Turner. Great balance for Northern Iowa. And Eldon Miller just has to be tickled to death the way his kids have played today. Now this lineup for Missouri in the game is a pretty good defensive lineup, but where are you going to get your offense? Well, that's where you're going to get it from Button, but there's not very many offensive threats out there for the Missouri Tigers. There may have been a break for Missouri. It looked like the ball went off the Tigers out of bounds. They'll maintain control. That's Reese coming back in. He's had a good rest this time. And he is the guy who's gotten about every loose ball inside. Look at those stats. Button again, double team, but wheels to the lane, got the bucket and the foul. 
from Hill, who was just mismatched inside against him. Mullenberger that time reached in to try to, talk, to stop Nathan Button. And what Northern Iowa has done very well throughout the game is they've stepped down and they've put their bodies between those big guys in the basket. You're not going to stop Nathan Button just by reaching your arm in there. Button just powers right through. Button with 17 points. Give him 18, and the lead is now at 9 with 4.19 to go. Missouri really is going to need to get some results from this pressure. Nothing more discouraging for a defense than to apply the pressure and not get any visible result from it. Northern Iowa now is in the offense. They're trying to run some time. Reese against Button. Well, that's a bad lead in and missed everything. The ball stolen back, but a foul. That's a bad shot by Reese right there. He's under heavy defensive pressure. You've got a good lead in the basketball game, a nine-point lead. There's four minutes left to go in the game. You simply don't take that shot. You throw it back out to burn some more time, get a better one. And there was some time left on the shot clock, Absolutely. too. So he just about violated every principle there is. One of the few mistakes he has made all day long. The foul was on McCullough, his third. And it'll send Warren to the free throw line. He's one out of two, which is exactly on his season's average from the line. And then Missouri, nothing better could happen for them on that particular play. They get to now try to cut into this nine-point lead without time running off the clock. This ball game is far from over. Warren will get another one. Anthony Peeler getting set to come back in the basketball game. Boy, if you're a Missouri follower, you know how important Peeler is to this ball club. He has one point today. There's a timeout on the court. Northern Iowa 67, Missouri 59. Back after these words from your local station, this is an NCAA Productions Telecast. Make it eight points. They're down 67-59. Warren missed the second free throw. Reese got his hands on it. And Northern Iowa will come out with it. Brad Hill kicks it after Dale Turner. Dan, would you go back to your regular offense for a couple of trips, try to get a bucket? Well, I think that you're, you're either going to do one of two things. And with Missouri gambling and trying to pressure, it might be hard to hold the ball. So maybe going to your regular offense would not be a bad idea. Again, Missouri's in a situation where they have to gamble defensively. Turner trying to penetrate, lost it on the way in. Reach-in foul will be called on Lee Coward. That's his fourth. Doug Smith has already fouled out of the ball game. One of the hardest things to do in college basketball is to use the 45-second clock at the end of a basketball game when somebody's trying to pressure you. At that time, Northern Iowa in the person of Turner with the great job to penetrate, create the foul situation. Peeler back in the ball game. He could, even though he has not scored from the field, he could be a factor down the stretch because of his great athletic ability. Turner, one and one, missed. Reese got his hands on it, almost came down with a rebound, off his hands, out of bounds. Brad Hill getting in there, <laughs> knocking it away from Nathan Button. Big trip for Missouri. They're down by eight points, 3.19 to go in the game. You have some time. You don't need to be in a big hurry. Button to Coward. Nice feed. Penetration that time with the pass to the post. Coward cutting to the basket. Excellent pass. Turner to Hill to McCullough. They beat the pressure. McCullough backs it out. Under three minutes to go. Northern Iowa by six. Turner got Warren to turn his head, almost drove by him. Warner, Warner's wondering what he's Warren is wondering what he's doing out there. Hill rushed that shot, and McCullough got the rebound and hurried to follow. They could have taken another 45 seconds off the clock. Great feed to Warren. He gets the bucket and draws the foul. Now you know that at the last time out, Eldon Miller didn't tell his guys to go out and shoot the ball up as fast as you can and then foul down on the other end. Missouri really doing a nice job reacting. Again, this is in transition. That's Warren catching the ball inside. Not much of a foul there, but you simply don't want to do that at this point in the game. You can see some of the assistant coaches for Northern Iowa scratching their heads over there. Warren with a chance to cut the lead to three with 2.38 to go. And does, and it allows them to set up the full court pressure. 
Mike, I think if you weren't going to go back to your regular offense before, you've got to seriously think about it now. They've got a three-on-two situation here. McCullough beats Therese against Button. Won't go. Missouri could tie with a three. They have led only once, 2 nothing. Man to man. Coward left alone after the contact. The lead is one point. Mike, what we may be seeing here is the difference between a tournament toughened team and a team that's never been in the NCAA tournament before. Elvin Miller, Miller recognizes what's going on. He calls a timeout. Lee Coward and Nathan Button doing a tremendous job down the stretch for the Missouri Tigers. Hill almost lost it. The pass hit him in the chest. Northern Iowa, one timeout remaining. Turner, let's see if they go to Reese. Mullenberg has also had a sensational game. They're back in their regular offense, though, Mike. Going to run through the options. 19 seconds on the shot clock. The game clock is on your screen. This is Dale Turner. That's great defense by Coward. Almost the steal. Hill back to Turner, wide open. He hesitated on that shot, but look who's there. Reese got the rebound, double team. How did he get that in the basket? Oh, yeah. you got to be kidding me. How did he do that? He had four guys draped all over him. He got the rebound with one hand while he's got Warren with the other arm. Watch this. Hesitation on the shot. Good block out. Now watch Reese and Warren. They've got arms locked together. Catches the ball. Now he cradles it. McIntyre's there. Oh, my. What a big play. He isn't pretty, but he has been tremendous. Missed the free throw. That's a big miss. So Three-point game, Reese with 18 points. Missouri's got plenty of time. There's plenty of time left in the game to look for the opportunity. Button inside, mismatch against Hill. Peeler hesitating on the shot. Coward for three. Knocked out of bounds, out to Missouri with 58 seconds to go. They are down by three. Interesting that Peeler did not even look for the shot. Nobody blocked out Peeler. He came flying in there, got a hand on the ball. Reese playing inside for Northern Iowa with four fouls. Norm Stewart has no timeouts left. It's up to the kids right now. McIntyre. Got Peeler's that coming. He's shooting the ball. Peeler on the drive. Got it. His first basket of the entire game. He came around that screen and he wanted the basketball. Reese fouled in backcourt. That foul will be on McIntyre. He is fourth. And Reese will have to go to the free throw line with 41 seconds to go. Reese, who just missed the free throw. He's four for six today, Dan. He's a 76% free throw shooter on the year. Coming into the ball game, he had attempted 202 free throws. The next closest guy on the team had 97, so this guy's used to being at the free throw line. He has 16 instead of 18 points. Biggest free throws of his career right now. And he drains the first one for a two-point lead. 15 rebounds, 17 points. Reese needs 19 to become the school's all-time leading scorer. The second one, that's a big one because it's a three-point lead. And here comes a three-point shooter into the ball game. Warren, the inside guy, is going out. Ford is coming in the game. And as we said, Norm Stewart has no timeouts. 39 seconds to go in the game. The shot clock is off. McIntyre, too strong. Button with a rebound. Oh, Reese has fouled out of the game. Do you believe this? Boy, in that situation, if he's oh. got the ball, you just don't foul him. Of course, Reese trying very hard to play tough defense. McIntyre with the three. Look at Button on the long rebound. How many times do you see that on a three-point shot? Button gets the rebound. He's not too excited about it. Boy, and Reese didn't do much except stand there with his hands up. Button matched up against Hill inside. Hill doesn't keep him off the board. What a game Reese has had. Button will go to the line there as Reese, 18 points, just a sensational job. And more importantly, Button has hit 
five out of five, or make it eight out of eight free throws this afternoon. He hits this one, and we're tied at 71 with 29 seconds left. Northern Iowa has to block out. If he misses this one, you want to get the rebound. Eldon Miller with one timeout left. Missouri with none. So the two stars are gone on each ball club. Barton hits it, it's tied. Now Northern Iowa can play for one shot. Doesn't look like Eldon Miller is going to call the timeout. Don't let that defense get set. Mullenberg. It's not usually the shot that kills you here. It's the offensive rebound. Missouri's got to block out. They got for five seconds, they get the timeout. Smart play by Mullenberg with 10 seconds to go. Mullenberg is the inbounds man. I think if I'm powered, I try to keep it away from this guy. Here we go. Turner, unable to get inside. Oh, newbie. Missouri out of the tournament. Northern Iowa's first trip to the NCAA, and they go to the second round. You're Maurice Newby. You've been sitting on the bench. The coach tells you, hey, Maurice, get in there and win the ball game. Here's Newby, matched up against Peeler. Turner comes. Newby just goes around. Peeler does not do a good job getting through the screen. That's a tough shot under pressure. He buries it. Missouri has no timeouts. The clock runs out. What a shot by Newby. Maurice Newby took three three-pointers today, buried them, and allowed Northern Iowa to eliminate Missouri. We'll be back with more from the Richmond Coliseum in just a moment.